Welcome live to Hollywood, where we present the Late Late Show Christmas Spectacular, starring tonight, the guys wearing sweaters. <laughs> and the guys wearing sweaters, dancers. <laughs> And the guys wearing sweaters, strip tease organization. <laughs> it's the guys wearing sweaters, everybody. Uh... <laughs> what happens is, if you don't know. If you don't know anything about the guys wearing sweaters, that every now and again they put on the same sweater and they come to the show. I think they smoke a lot of pot. <laughs> and they come to the show and we let them in. And why do we let them in? Because we have to. Because we're kind and we got seats to fill. And but they come to the show and they they turned up wearing Christmas sweaters and I thought, oh how lovely. But what you don't know is that. There's been a bit of a problem because once the dark-haired Christmas sweater guy turned up with a different sweater guy. <laughs> and I don't know if the other sweater guy knows anything about that. <laughs> so probably best not to... <laughs> probably best not to mention it right now. It was like he just turned up with a different sweater guy. It was like when they changed the Darren and Bewitched, and you're like, what? <laughs> what was the other thing they did that with? They did that with something else. In Roseanne, they did that as well. The, the, the Roseanne, the, like one of her kids turned into another kid. Yeah. Like, you can't, you can't just do that. <laughs> well, anyway, the sweater guy did that. I think there's been some... I, see, the thing is, I have this rule. I never talk to the sweater guys. And you know why? I don't like to break the mystery. Because I like to think that they roam the earth, you know, trying to solve crimes <laughs> with sweater power. <laughs> I see, that looks like there's been a murder. <laughs> Let me put on my sweater and have a good old think about this. <laughs> and you know that movie that's opening in Sherlock Holmes, that's opening on Christmas Day, that's, that's kind of like sweater guys, <laughs> really. Robert Downey Jr. and Jude Law. Jude Law looks a lot like Phil Collins. <laughs> Do we have a picture of Phil Collins, Benny says? No. Well, all right. Um, you just have to remember him then. <laughs> he's, uh, he's a short guy with, uh, you know, he's got uh, male pattern baldness. Uh, I don't know why they call it male pattern baldness anyway, but that's kind of like, it was, was, what else are you going to call it? Uh, irregular female baldness on a man? <laughs> Transvestite baldness? He's a dude, he's losing his hair, he's just, oh, you, 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 got, you got the baldness creeping in. I think I might have it, actually. <laughs> Not necessarily on my head. <laughs> Do you have a picture of Phil Collins? Can we see a picture of Phil Collins? There you are, yeah, yeah. I think I, that was Jude Law, wasn't it? <laughs> or Bill Pullman or Bill Paxman. No, I get them mocked up. It, I get them mocked up? Mocked up, I said it. <laughs> Do you know what I like? It? I like it in movies where they slow everything down. <laughs> if we did that here, I'd have to actually do that because there's no way we could actually create that effect. <laughs> We're lucky if we got a photograph of Phil. Ooh, la, la. <laughs> the Late Late Show with Craig Ferguson, sponsored by Windows 7, your PC simplified.
Ladies and gentlemen, Craig Ferguson. crumble away, let it crumble and die and fade like my dreams. <laughs> let your enthusiasm become something more real, like disappointment. Great day for America, everyone. It is. It is. A great day for America, but not a great day for the state of New York. According to a recent survey, New York State is the least happy state in the U.S. Luckily for New Yorkers, they don't give a rat's ass. They're like, what do I care? I don't care. I ain't happy, so what? Ooh la la. Merry Christmas. There was a big surprise today for uh, people living in London. Queen Elizabeth herself, you know, I'm the queen. <laughs> That's what she sounds like. She took an ordinary passenger train for her annual Christmas trip. Throughout the, the, the whole, the whole uh, ride, the poor train conductor had to hear the, you know, it's old, it's rickety, it's, it smells like pee-pee. <laughs> but the passengers stopped complaining once the queen got off. <laughs> but fine, blame me! <laughs> it's a great weekend in Hollywood. I'm very excited. There's a big movie open today. I'm very excited about it. It's one of the most anticipated movies of the year. Expect long lines at the theatres all weekend. We have a poster for the movie. Oh, not that one! <laughs> That's Did You Hear About the Morgans. That's a romantic comedy with a cute couple, Sarah Jessica Parker and Hugh Grant. One's an oversensitive lady who cries a lot and the other one is Sarah Jessica Parker. <laughs> No, no the, the other movie, the movie that I'm excited about that's opening today is The Avatar. You know, the science fiction epic of the planet with the blue people. Uh, the blue people, they're very cool looking, the blue people in the... Uh, have you seen... The, tra the trailer is awesome. Have you seen it? Look, look, put it in the trailer. You are not in Kansas anymore. You are on Pandora. Just relax and let your mind go blank. You are not in Kansas anymore. Yeah, it's all right, of course. That was, that was just a joke. <laughs> they aren't the real blue people. The real blue people in Avatar, do you have a picture of them? The real blue, yeah, look at that. Some. They look like cats, which is good. This, that means the movie's going to be successful because people love cats. <laughs> why, but they love them. The play Cats went for, or it was run on Broadway for over 100 years. <laughs> and the, if the people who made Avatar are smart, there'll be a scene in the movie where a cat bursts into song with all the other cats who all sing along in Cockney accents. <laughs> oh, I'm a big blue cat. Me name is Shucks. I just uh, left a present in me litter box. <laughs> Cockney singing cats. There ain't anything funnier than that, really, is it? Anyway, the Avatar movie, it cost $300 million to make, which doesn't mean it's good. I haven't seen it, so I don't know. But you don't need $300 million to make a good movie. All you need is a good script, a good actor, and boobies. <laughs> Actually, when I think about it, you don't really need actors or a script, but you need boobies. And apparently this, the Avatar movie, it needs to, to make $750 million at the box office just to break even. I know. 
There's only two ways to take in that kind of money. I, you either make an amazing hit movie or you divorce Tiger Woods. There it is! There's the Tiger Woods joke! There it is! Oh, my God! Take that! Yep. <laughs> <laughs> That's cold, Craig. I know, I know. <laughs> anyway, the, the studio's hoping to make a lot of their money back this weekend. So the, the Avatar movie is opening today all over the world in almost every country in the world, except for some reason in Italy. I can't find out why, but they're not opening the movie in Italy. The people of Italy are furious. They're going, why are we not getting to the Avatar? <laughs> What's a coming a go? <laughs> I like the aliens with the skin the color of the Tusi Fruzi ice cream. <laughs> anyway, people are excited about Avatar because it's in the 3D. People like the 3D. Every movie's in 3D nowadays, and I don't like that. And I'll tell you why. Because soon they'll be making those stuffy English dramas in the 3D as well. Be all, I say, Lord Percy, would you like a cup of tea? <laughs> oh, I think my dress is unfolding. <laughs> Actually, I don't think I'd mind that so much at all, actually. <laughs> I wish CBS had put some of their shows in 3D. People would be sitting at home trying to swat away Andy Rooney's eyebrows. <laughs> don't you hate young people? <laughs> if you really want to see an amazing thing in 3D, go and see something. This is an incredible thing. Go and see something called live theatre. <laughs> it's like, it's, it's, it's all, you can reach out and touch them. Now, don't. Don't reach out and touch them. You'll get kicked out if you do that. <laughs> I learned that the hard way. <laughs> call me Nathan Lane. <laughs> no, no, I, I shouldn't say that. He really would call me. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> no, uh, Nathan, I'll, I'll phone you during the commercials. I can't believe that happened. I can't believe that when the phone rings, I can hear it out here. <laughs> wow, that's amazing. Uh, it's amazing that we've done over a thousand of these shows and the phone has never rung once. <laughs> until now. What are, what are the odds? <laughs> anyway, what I'm saying is I think the Avatar movie is pretty good. Because it's, it's got to be. It's directed by James Cameron. He made Titanic. And I like that movie, except for the part where Bill Pullman or Bill Paxton, I can't remember who it is. <laughs> You know the Bill guy, who is it? They're in the submarine bit, the wraparound bit, and then they let that old woman throw the priceless necklace into the water at the end? I'm sorry, but if my grandmother threw a, 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 something priceless into the water, she'd be getting in after it. It'd be right after it! <laughs> and, I, and I wouldn't let her up until, until I'm, she, I'm like, please let me out! Get down and... Get down! I can't find it! You get down there and find it. You threw it! You bet you're cold, it's the North Atlantic, swim! <laughs> All right, we have to take a break. We'll be right back, everybody. We'll be right back. Hi, everybody. Welcome back. Welcome back to the Big Friday Night Show. Welcome back to the Big Friday Night Show. Well, not the Big Friday Night Show. Welcome back to a Friday Night Show. <laughs> do we have time for email? Yep. Yeah, we do. Uh, all right. This is, uh, this is from Laurie in uh, Port Coquitlam in British Co Columbia. Coquitlam. That sounds like a Victorian sexual act, doesn't it? <clears throat> I say, Lord Percy, did you perform Coquitlam? Yes, I did. And let me just say that Lady Foxington Worthy will never be the same again. <laughs> and the type of Coquitlam, was it Port Coquitlam? <laughs> or Starboard Port Coquitlam? <laughs> oh, always Starboard. Well, Port out, Starboard home. Um, <laughs> Welcome, sexually deviant sailors. <laughs> I made myself laugh. Uh, this is uh, from Laurie. She says, Dear Craig, what part of a gingerbread man do you eat first? Um, I, uh, you know, I usually, I, I usually take the bite of a foot, foot for in case they try and get away. 
Uh, this is from Titus in Dixon in Tennessee. Titus says, Hi, hey Craig, my name is Titus. I know it says it up at the top. But you just, uh, I am a youth pastor in Dixon, Tennessee. I see. Do you have any clean jokes that I could use in a sermon for my teenagers? I am emailing you because I, think, I don't think you really will read my email on the air. Well, I'd say for a youth pastor, you show very little faith. However, <laughs> however, here we are, a clean joke that you can use for your uh, teenage sermon goers. A uh, travelling salesman uh, walks up to a door, uh, knocks on the door, and a kid comes to the door. A young 10-year-old kid comes to the door uh, wearing a uh, bra and panties, a pair of high heels, smoking a cigar and drinking a glass of scotch. <laughs> and the travelling uh, salesman says, Oh, uh, 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 hello, Sonny, are your parents home? And the kid says, What do you think? <laughs> now, now, to be fair... fair, that's not my joke. <laughs> that joke belongs to my friend Greg Proops, but he would like me to tell you that joke because it's clean. <laughs> it's clean for me. <laughs> well, you could take out the bit where the kid cusses and just, you know, and it doesn't have to be a brand panties. It could be, you know, nah, it has to be a brand panties. Yeah. <laughs> Make up your own material. Uh, or steal your own material from Greg Brooks. You could do that. Too. Um, all right, this is uh, this is from Tamara in Arlington, Texas. It's funny that's on tonight's show. I, I thought it would be on Tamara. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you, you can use that with the teenagers. Anyway, <laughs> Tamara says, Hey Craig, sometimes I have dreams that I'm a guest on your show. Do you ever have dreams that you're my roommate in college? <laughs> yes, I do. <laughs> but I'm not stupid enough to try and mesh my dreams with reality. <laughs> I know what would happen then. I'd have to give away half my stuff again. <laughs> we'll be right back, everybody. We'll Friday, December the 18th show. Ah, only a certain amount of days left until Christmas. Seven. <laughs> Don't judge me, I dropped out of school. What are you on? What a smart guy, watch cable. <laughs> My uh, first guest tonight is an amazing actress. I've got to be honest, a, a bit too good to be here, really. <laughs> I mean, really good. I mean, she, she doesn't behave like that, but she's just, I mean, she's the, one of the best actresses in the world! <laughs> and she's in the latest uh, film, Nine, which is in theatres now, December 18th. <laughs> Take a look at this clip. Directing a movie is a very overrated job. We all know it. I just have to say yes and no. What else do you do? Nothing. Maestro, should this be red? Yes. Green? No. More extras? Yes. More lipstick? No. Yes, no. Yes, no. Yes, no. It's directing. That's right. That's directing. It doesn't seem to make a blind bit of difference, finally, what the answer is. So please, Guido. Yes or no? Do you want any costumes in this film? Yes. You see? Simple. Please welcome the very lovely Dave Judy Dance, everybody. They love you as do I. 
Hi, Judy. How lovely to see you. And Welcome you. to the show. We won't be needing this. <laughs> now, I have to say, I'm very, I think the audience is excited. I think I'm excited. Uh, you're, uh, you're here. In the, it's the week before Christmas, of course. Oh, of course. Yes. Yes, of Now's course. the time to yes. do your best acting. <laughs> You've had it. No, no, come on. Now, the, the thing is, I've noticed a lot recently, maybe uh, uh, two or three films that I can think of anyway, where you play a queen. You're always playing queens. That's why I gave up acting. You always got the queen parts I could never get. <laughs> Why do you think that yes, is? Yes, well, it's, it's, that's rather boring, isn't it? What? Playing a queen? We're playing queens all the time. Yes, queens was, no, all the time. No, I think you were lovely. You did the Queen Victoria. It was so nice. I and, did and with, you your were with, with your friend Billy Connolly. Billy Connolly, yes. yes. Yeah. That did you have a nice time bad. with Billy? We had a wonderful, wonderful time together. Really? Did you yes. have an affair? <laughs> I can't possibly say that. All oh, right. <laughs> so you <laughs> Oh, that's... The, do you know, uh, Billy... <laughs> Billy's got a tattoo right there. Do you, he has, he how, has. Do, how did you cover that up in the film? Well, I don't know how they did that. I was rather amazed to see it one day and the next day not at all. They, and then that's and the, it's that's back the again. wonder he, of the theatre, isn't it? Well, uh, yes, yeah. Theatre, film, they all Quite. they've got this makeup and stuff. Like, I have a tattoo but, here. Look, see that? Oh. Yeah, yeah. I got, I got three. And all the way up. It goes all the way around to my peepee. <laughs> <laughs> I knew someone else like that. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> oh, really? Do you know what? I always thought it'd be nice to have a, a... I wanted to have on my back a tattoo of a fox hunting tableau where the, the, <laughs> they were chasing the foxes and the fox's tail disappears into the... Uh... <laughs> uh, that would be classy, wouldn't it? Yeah. Have you had it done? No, no I haven't had it no. done, no. Do you have any tattoos? No, none at all. Now's the time. I think I should do something. Yes, about it. why yes, not? Perhaps. Yeah. Well, there's do, always time, isn't do, there? Do you enjoy the the uh, the counterculture, the tattoos, the uh, the, the uh, what else is there? I guess uh, drugs. Do you take a lot of drugs? <laughs> you don't. No. Well, you, I mean, you were doing theatre in Britain in the 70s. So there must have been a little bit I of a. I missed out on all that. You did. I missed out on it all. Yes, all those. I wore the flowers and I wore the. Things, but not the. <laughs> not that. That passed me by. How did it pass me by? I don't know, Judy. Not I'm rather sure. concerned for you. <laughs> well, luckily you're in California where they have medical marijuana. Perhaps you could try some now if you want. But I don't know. I never really got into it, to be honest. I mean, I did, like a lot. And then I. <laughs> And then I, uh, I did, when I worked in the theatre in Britain, you've done a lot of work in the West End in London, haven't you? I have. Yeah, did, did you, there's a lot of drinking goes on there. Did you ever get involved in any of that? Yes, a bit. Yeah. yeah. I, had, I, I had to, when I did cabaret over right. the, in London, um, I went to a, a wonderful uh, a place beforehand, Forest Mere, um, to lose some weight and get into a bit of training. Right. And I met this very, very nice man who, who um, uh, uh, designed shoes and things. And he sent me this great present on the first night of Cabaret, which was um, four dozen quarter bottles of champagne. Hello. And, do you know, it's the only thing that got me on. Really? <laughs> oh, quick swig of that and I was ready to bring well, the house You down. surprised me. I... <laughs> I never thought, I thought of you as being a, a, a master, uh, well, not a technician, that seems unfair, but, but very precise in, in your work. You actually have well, I haven't done it since. Right. I did that and exhausted it in that. Right, you and drank thought, all the That's champagne. enough, that's enough, I've done that now. Yeah. I don't know, I, I, I wish I could think like that. <laughs> Quarter bottles of champagne. Yes. Didn't it make you a bit... Well, it did. When you were... Uh, <laughs> Welcome and bienvenue. That's not my part. Oh, that wasn't your part? <laughs> no. Oh. Who did you play? Sally Bowles? Sally Bowles, yeah, yes. That's yes. Nice. Yeah, And I saw you uh, do Lady Macbeth. Uh, I know I shouldn't say that, of course. Not well, because can, it's a secret. Not, it's not a theatre, is it? No, it's certainly not. Allowed, not. No, it's, uh, <laughs> it's, uh, it's a converted <laughs> photography studio. I'm not kidding. <laughs> it really is. Although we have this fantastic view of Los Angeles here. <laughs> Are you superstitious? Your legs like can't have reached the ground. What, when? When you came to see Macbeth. I was very young. You yeah, must yeah. have been very, very yeah, young. Yeah, yeah, I was, uh, I guess, I was um, 11 or 12 years old, something like that. What, what, when was it? 
70-something. Yeah, it'd be about right. mid-70s? Yeah, mid-70s. Yes, I was born in 62, so it yes. would be, yeah, it'd be mid-70s. I was very scared by it. You did this very scary scream where you went like that, and then nothing came out, and then the scream came out. I thought, oh, that's clever. <laughs> One night I passed out doing it. You passed out doing the yes, screen? Yes, because it was during the sleepwalking scene and I <sighs> overcompensated, took too much breath, <laughs> screamed, oh. <laughs> That's quite interesting. Yes. But it's during the sleepwalking scene, so yes. you could have just. So I could have acted, done anything. Yeah, you could be sleeping. You're just. You're, you're She's having a tricky time, isn't she? Yeah. And <laughs> a particular tricky time that night. Yeah, well that was that. But we also, that, we also uh, during that, we had no understudies at all. And Roger Reese, who was playing. He's Mac a lovely Duff, actor, yeah. He, he was on. Is. The Americans know him from uh, Cheers. They he do. played. Uh, uh, they do. Uh, What's Kirstie Alley's boyfriend. Yes. The English boyfriend, yeah. <clears throat> and I think he's coming over to London very shortly to take over in uh, uh, Waiting for Godot. Oh. I think they're going to really. I hate that, that play. <laughs> I, do you really? I have to say, I know it's a masterpiece, We're blah, blah. We're not allowed blah. to say it. Oh, everybody, oh, that, waiting no for Godot, it's so, it's like, he never shows up, it's awful. <laughs> and the two of them, what's his name, uh, uh, estrogen and testosterone, yes. they, <laughs> they're there, and all they do is they, they say, I'm going out, and then they go out and they come back, and the, the, the bowler hats, yeah, I think, this is pish. <laughs> I hate this. Yes, it's tricky stuff. I hate yes. to sit through. Do you ever do it's any do uh, theatre <clears throat> that's very, very uh, brainy and think, I really can't stand this? Oh, yes, you know, how you have to look like you understand. Every time I play M in, in, in James Bond. No, you're great. I don't know. I don't, no, no, I'm no. About, no. <laughs> no. I have to, no, oh, you true. mustn't. It's absolutely true. I have to talk about things I know nothing about. But you're very good but at I it. I have to look like I do. Yes. You've got, I Rather love it, it's very sexy look. and powerful and all that. Bossing That's Daniel Craig as well, he, he works out. He's good news. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, he is. He's good news for us all, Dave <laughs> Judy. He is. Is he nice? Yeah, he's terrific. Is he really? Very, I find uh, that rather annoying. Great, yes, I know, I know. Yeah. All that and to be very nice yeah. and to have a sense of humour yes. and to be very self-deprecating. Ah, it's disgusting. Yeah. <laughs> and do your own stunts. He does his own on. stunts? Yeah, many, many of them. Well, they want to want to make them more dangerous for that wise ass <laughs> then, don't they? <laughs> I'll give him a particularly hard time in the next yes, year from I, you. I do Good. like the James... Were you a fan of James Bond before? Did you enjoy I, I it? Was, I was. Well, <laughs> Sean, too. And, oh, God, I love know. Sean Connery. I think oh. he's fantastic. Oh. I went to this uh, party they had from here. It was, it was very nice. He looked at my wife's breasts. <laughs> And, and that's like, not all, Rex. Yeah, yeah, well, well, yeah, it was that night. But he, uh, he, I think he looked at other people's wives' breasts too. He wasn't. He doesn't. He doesn't limit himself to one pair of breasts per evening. He was. It was. Ah, uh, there's everywhere. He was shaking. He's a. Uh, he's a very sexual creature, isn't he, Sean Connery? I think he is. Do you have an affair with him? No. <laughs> <laughs> Passed you by like it, those things in the 70s and yes, 60s. Yeah. Right. yeah. <coughs> well, I, we're out of time. Now, what I like yeah. to do here, because this is your first time on the show, we like to end with an awkward pause. Is that all right? Is that stupid? Well, it's, it's like a little deconstruction thing that I like to do in television. You know when they say, oh, and the boom, boom, and the. I don't like that. <laughs> I like to end with an uncomfortable, awkward pause. <laughs> Friday is, uh, is a very, very attractive actress. Uh, someone goes first to say sexy, and I'd be amongst them. Uh, there's a, the, she's in the, the new film, Avatar, the one I was talking about tonight. <laughs> it's in theaters right now. Take a look at this. We're in the flux vortex. VFR from here on. What's VFR? Means you gotta see where you're going. Can't see anything. <laughs> exactly.
I like her. I like a girl that can fly a helicopter. Please welcome the lovely Michelle Rodriguez, everybody. Uh, what happens in talk shows is they give the uh, host of the talk show a little list of questions to ask uh, whoever guest is on the show. And my contention always is, if I needed a list of questions to talk to a woman like you, I shouldn't be in show business in the first place. <laughs> right on. You see I what I'm it. saying? I like your pants, by the way. Oh, thank you. Stella McCartney, you know, she knows how to make... She you know, made those pants? There's, yeah. there, there's, you get a few holes coming in. I know, I know. Makes it nice and breezy in you case know you get nervous and sweaty. No, you I, do you get nervous and sweaty? Yeah, sometimes. On your no. legs? <laughs> All right, stop it. All right. Yeah. Do you know what I'm just thinking? I was just thinking, though, if you wanted the reverse of these pants, you could put them on, then get a Sharpie and go all over your legs, and then take the pants off and, hey, presto, the reverse <laughs> pants. Plus a chance of a, a job in 101 Dalmatians, the remake, because... <laughs> You know, I think I might actually try that Do one it. day. Or just get it tattooed in the areas. Maybe for Halloween. It's very similar to the Navi pattern on their he on their faces. Oh, the know, Navi's the name of the people in the movie, yeah, right? Yeah, the blue guys. The blue guys, yeah, the Navi. <laughs> Do you, can you fly a helicopter? I know. No. Uh, no. no. I'm well, that's sorry. all the time we have. <laughs> But I did, Have you ever I, tried? I trained, yes. I did fly over Los Angeles and he, and, he, and, and the, the, the guy who was teaching me how Not to fly. Not Lance. Huh? Was it Lance out of our Nyes, the helicopter instructor? No, 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 no. no, no, no. He, he's amazing, though. And <laughs> what was his name? I forget his name. No, sir. I'm so sorry. That's all right. Um, but yeah, he let me control the cyclic, and that thing is so—it's so sensitive. I, I mean, know. Like with a pinky, you can. I've done it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. Fly? Yeah, yeah. I fly a plane. Choppers? Yeah, I've flown a chopper once. What do, what do you fly? I fly a little Cessna. You have a license? license? Yeah, yeah, I'm a qualified pilot. That is awesome, ah, man. Suddenly, middle-aged white guy got a little more attractive. <laughs> Yeah, I fly a plane. Yeah, I sure, say. I fly upside down. I, I, no, I don't, it's I don't. really hot. Yeah, it's, 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 it's a hot thing to know how to fly. Would you like to learn how to in, fly? Yes, I would. I would I'm definitely. not qualified to teach you, but <laughs> I know some people who'd be overjoyed to teach you. Yeah, I'm yeah. definitely down. I think I prefer the chopper thing, though. Yeah. It's really awesome. Yeah, it's very, very fun. I, I flew one a little bit, but it, when you just, you can't move the stick at all. It's just the slightest no. little thing. And yeah, I know. It's awesome. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Are you a thrill seeker? Do you yeah, like that kind thing? of. Really? What about jumping out of planes? You ever done that? I do that all the time. I you do it. not? Yes, I do. I would never do that. I'm only 10 jumps strong, though. Yeah. What does that mean? That means that I've only jumped 10 times. I see. Yeah. <laughs> Well, you don't do it all the time then, do you? You lied to no, me. No, I yeah. did, I did, I did. But have you done it on your own? Yeah, once. Wow. Once I did it on my own. And my best friend decided that he wanted to come with me, man. He broke his ankle in three places. Yeah, that was his first time. Did he break? <laughs> he said, Leah, I'll jump out. I don't want to do with a guy behind me. I'm like, you he sure did it on about his own? that? <laughs> well, there's something about, for certain guys, not all guys, but for some guys being strapped to another guy behind you. <laughs> Even at 30 or whatever, what, do you, what height do you jump out at? 14, I think. 14,000. 14,000 yeah. feet? 14,000 feet. Oh, no. I so couldn't do awesome, that. So awesome, man. No. Ah, oh, dude, it feels No, I know so how good. to fly the plane. I know how to get it back on the ground. I don't need to jump out. <laughs> Even if the engine goes, they teach you how to land it without the engine. <laughs> can you do that in a helicopter? Mm, I don't think you can. You can. You can? Mm -hmm. You can it's dive called, bomb it? No, you auto gyro. It goes down the other way and you spin it down like that. See, I would never you, try you it. You know but, a lot uh, about this stuff. I do. I'm a pilot. You have to learn that it. That rocks. Yeah, they don't, you don't just turn up and go, hey, I'm on TV. And they go, oh, well, there's your pilot's license. I was in a movie. Oh, help yourself. Take any of our planes. That would be awesome, though. Yeah, well, it would be great, yeah. It would make some very interesting flying. I, I think you should try. I think it's a great thing. Were you ever frightened of it or anything like that? Mm, I was sweating a lot. Yeah? Yeah. What frightens you if you're kind of like, you're kind of action girl? Deep, deep water. Deep really? water frightens me. Yeah. Mm. 
Mm. I, I, that's one thing that I'm still scuba scared. Scuba diving? Have you ever done that? That's how you get over it. I am too scared to scuba dive um, because that's mm. deep water stuff. Yeah, but so. don't go that deep at first. Yeah, but just like I mean, get waist deep, put your head for in. For that, what do I need the scoop? What do I need the scuba gear for? Well, you, you, I'm a baby good steps, baby steps, Michelle. You get in a swimming pool at the shallow end. You put on the thing. You learn how to use it, <laughs> and then uh, that's how I learned to be a qualified scuba diver. Also, oh, no yeah. Way. <laughs> You're getting uber mojo points that's tonight. That's what I'm telling uber you. Uber mojo points I tonight. I think you'd love it. And you wear a lot of clothing like that, actually, when you go scuba diving. <laughs> Are you frightened of the critters? Is that what it is? Do you know? Yeah, like you know, not knowing what's five feet in front of you. In the deep ocean, you know, you could barely see more than five feet in front of you. Everything else is dark, no matter what direction you're looking. And it's scary, you know? Yeah, what about dark rooms? <laughs> so much. Well, you don't know what's all around you. I mean, for here, for example, you can't see five feet in front of you here. <laughs> yeah, but I don't mind that so yeah, much. Yeah, it's all right. We're over here. Everything's <laughs> fine. You can move your hands a lot faster when there's air. Are you a good fighter? I think I can. I can really? handle myself. Any martial arts or anything like no, that? No, nothing professional. Just some street, you know, ah, yeah. street wiseness. Yeah, <laughs> I know what to aim for to get you to stop. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and I think you just hit it. What is that? That's my cup. You like it? Yeah, I got that on a wreck dive. <laughs> <laughs> that is an interesting piece of work right there. Yeah, it's a snake cup from the Albuquerque Rattlesnake Museum. Do you enjoy snakes? I do. I love snakes. Yeah. It looks more like the kind of gift you'd get at a rap party for natural born killers. Yeah. <laughs> It kind of occasionally makes me think about going on a killing spree when I use it. <laughs> I just go out and go a little nuts. Um, so what about guns? you play with guns? I do. I play with guns a lot. I really? like it. It's kind fun. Of, what kind of guns? I'm not you're... a great shot, though. I right. have to improve definitely my aim. But I can take apart an M4 and put it back together in less than a minute. Shut I'm good at up. cleaning guns. Really? Yeah. Why? I'm good at shooting them. I just, you know, can't have hit to... Can't what you're aiming at. Just, I need a lot of bullets to get to it. I have no problem. <laughs> no problem whacking them off, though, and I got lots of ammunition. <laughs> <clears throat> Welcome to the part of the show that we call Double Entendre Review. I got no problem whacking them off, though. I've got plenty of ammunition. You're welcome, 18 to 13, you 40-year-old uh, male demographic. <laughs> hey, we're out of time. Will you come back again? Yes, I I'm very excited would about this it. movie, by the way. Yeah, it, I hope you like it. I will like it, I'm sure. It I'm sure. It looks fantastic. You know, and, and that 3D experience is just a whole new world. Man. I know, it's like looking out the window. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very excited about but it. But at an imaginary world. At a, looking out the window to another planet. Yeah, another yeah. realm. And I think that's the main attraction. You can't find that at a theater. That's right. You have to go to another planet. Planet. Yeah. Mm. All right. It's been lovely to meet with you, Michelle. Michelle <laughs> you Rodriguez, too. everybody. We'll be right back. Well, I think what we learned on the... Oh, I think something happened over there. What happened over there? I think someone over there learned where they put their bucket. <laughs> I think it was Michelle Rodriguez trying to get out and the room's too dark and she uh, bumped into an underwater creature. Or the photograph of Phil Collins that we leave lying around. Oh, we're out of time. Uh, it only leaves uh, me to say, look, uh, I'm, I don't normally uh, blow my own trumpet, although I could, thanks to Kundalini Yoga, but I... <laughs> but I would, I would venture to say, I would venture to say that uh, this show, while normally crap, will probably be pretty good next Tuesday. We'll see you Monday.